Now we want to talk about linear optimization models. Optimization is one of the things that you would want to do whether you're leading a company, whether you're running a small group, or you're working in a nonprofit or a school. Optimization simply means that you want to get the best out of the situation. Now when we look at business analytics and how we use these tools to understand optimization, we come up with scenarios that we want to optimize. We'll call those optimization problems. Optimization problems can be used to support and improve managerial decision making. When you have an optimization problem, you're either going to maximize or minimize some type of function, which we'll call the objective function, and we're going to have a set of restrictions when we try to do that. We're going to call those constraints. Now, an optimization problem can be linear or it can be nonlinear. Let me give you some examples of some scenarios that would qualify as an optimization problem. A manufacturer wants to develop a production schedule and an inventory policy that will satisfy demand in future periods and at the same time minimize the total production and inventory costs. A financial analyst would like to establish an investment portfolio from a variety of stock and bond investment alternatives that maximizes the return on investment. Another example is this. A marketing manager wants to determine how best to allocate a fixed advertising budget among alternative advertising media, such as web, radio, television, newspaper, and magazine that maximizes advertising effectiveness. In each of those examples, you see that there is a clear objective. But you also, in those examples, see that there are constraints that could limit the degree to which the objective can be pursued. Based on that criteria, you now have an optimization problem. Now let's talk about linear programming. Linear optimization models are also known as linear programs. Linear programming is a problem-solving approach developed to help managers make better decisions. There are several applications of linear programming. One example is when GE Capital uses linear programming to help determine optimal lease structures for capital purchases. Let's talk about two different types of problems in linear programming, the maximization problem and the minimization problem. We'll start with the maximization problem. Imagine you have a company called Par Incorporated, which is a small manufacturer of golf equipment and supplies. Management has decided to move into the market for medium and high priced golf bags. PAR's distributor is planning to buy all of the produced bags by the end of the third month. Operations involved in manufacturing a golf bag include cutting and dyeing the material, sewing, finishing, which means inserting umbrella holder and club separators and other gear, and the inspection and packaging process. Here's the production requirement per golf bag. For cutting and dyeing, the production time for a standard bag is seven-tenths of an hour. For a deluxe bag, it's one hour. For sewing the bags, the standard bag takes half an hour, where a deluxe bag takes five-sixths of an hour. To finish the bag, it takes one hour for a standard bag, but then it takes two-thirds of an hour for a deluxe bag. The inspection and packaging of the bag takes one-tenth of an hour for a standard bag and one-fourth of an hour for a deluxe bag. As you see, the parameters for the standard bag are very different for the deluxe bag. However, both bags require the same type of process in order to complete them. Now we have an optimization problem. The estimated total time available for the next three months to perform different operations is the following. We have 630 hours for cutting and dyeing. We have 600 hours for sewing. We have 708 hours for finishing. And then we have 135 hours for inspection and packaging. Here's the kicker. The required profit contribution is that for each standard bag, that will bring you $10 in profit per unit. Each deluxe bag will bring you $9 in profit per unit. We now have all of the constraints between the processes of making the standard bag and the deluxe bag, and we also understand the profit that each bag is going to drive. 
What we want to do now is maximize the amount of bags being produced so that with those constraints, we can achieve the highest amount of profit. How do we do that? Well, we have to develop a mathematical model for the program that determines the number of standard bags and the number of deluxe bags to produce to maximize total profit contribution. So what we have to do is build a model. Similar to what we did when we worked through regression, now we're going to build a model for optimization. The general guidelines for the problem formulation is this. We have to understand the problem thoroughly. We also have to describe the objective. In this case, it is to maximize total contribution to profit. As we look at this optimization problem, let's look at our constraints a little closer. Here's our first constraint. The number of hours of cutting and dyeing time used must be less than or equal to the number of hours of cutting and dyeing time available. Here's our second constraint. The number of hours of sewing time used must be less than or equal to the number of hours of sewing time available. The third constraint sounds similar. The number of hours of finishing time used must be less than or equal to the number of hours of finishing time available. And then our last constraint is that the number of hours of inspection and packaging time used must be less than or equal to the number of hours of inspection and packaging time available. At a high level, that just simply means that you only have a certain amount of hours for each of the processes to build the bags. So you cannot in whatever decision you make for the number of bags that you produce, exceed the capacity that you have to do those processes. As we put this mathematical model together, we will just use the letter S to represent standard bags, and we'll use the letter D to represent the deluxe bags. Also, we'll write the objective in terms of the decision variables. In this case, if PAR, the company, makes $10 for every standard bag, and $9 for every deluxe bag, then our total profit contribution equation becomes 10 times S for standard plus 9 times D for deluxe is equal to what we would call our objective function. So our objective is to maximize 10S plus 9D. When we're formulating the problem, we also have to write our constraints in terms of the deluxe bags and the standard bags. Look at constraint one. The hours of cutting time and dyeing time used has to be less than the hours of cutting time and dyeing time available. So mathematically, we would say 7 tenths S plus 1D has to be less than and equal to 630. That's one of our constraint equations. Now we go through and create one of those equations for each of the constraints. The next constraint is around sewing time. The hours of sewing time used has to be less than or equal to the hours of sewing time available, expressed in terms of standard bags and deluxe bags created. That equation is 1 half S plus 5 6 D has to be less than or equal to 600. The third constraint is related to the finishing time. Expressed in terms of standard bags and deluxe bags, our objective function, 1S plus 2 thirds D has to be less than or equal to 708. And the last constraint is around inspection and packaging time. Expressed in terms of the standard bags and the deluxe bags, 1 tenth S plus 1 fourth D has to be less than or equal to 130. We also have what's called non-negative constraints. Based on the fact that the number of standard or deluxe bags produced cannot be negative. We don't produce negative bags or negative one bags or negative two bags. So we have to put the constraint that all S and D variables have to be greater than zero. Now we have all of the functions we need in order to solve this problem. This is a linear programming model because the objective function and all constraint functions are linear functions of the decision variables. Remember, the decision variables in this case are the S and the D to represent the standard bags produced and the deluxe bags produced. 
It is a linear function because it's a mathematical function in which each variable appears in a separate term and is raised to the first power. That is very important to remember. Now to find the optimal solution, what you simply have to do is you have to plot each of these variables on a graph. And what's going to happen is a region of solutions will be created that you can pick from. However, you must pick the right solution that optimizes the objective function. Figure 8.1 gives us a picture of what happens when we're able to plot the constraint functions and the objective functions at the same time. We see the formation of the feasible region, and the feasible region is simply a collection of all of the data points that will fulfill each of the constraint functions as well as the objective function. However, this is a maximization problem. So we have to figure out what solution maximizes total profit. In figure 8.2, you see each of the profit lines plotted through the feasible region. You see 10S plus 9D equals 1800. That's plotted. You see 10S plus 9D equals 3600. Then you see 10S plus 9D equals 5,400. And then you see a line where it says 10S plus 9D equals 7,668. Why do we see those lines? Well, remember, our objective function was 10S plus 9D. We're just now trying to figure out what that constant is or the maximum profit should be equal to in order to fit a line through one point of that region. As you look at this, you'll notice the five points that have been illustrated. The first point is zero. Well, we know that that point won't work because we get zero profit. Then we see point number two, which is on the S axis between 600 and 800. That point will work. But then we see point number four and five, they're also in the feasible region, but they don't maximize the profit based on those straight line representations of the function. When we look at option number three, it touches the feasible region and it actually maximizes the profit contribution. The formula 10S plus 9D equals 7,668, places that profit line through a point on the region that is the optimal point for both the standard bag production and the deluxe bag production. Through that point, S is equal to 540, D is equal to 252. So to maximize our profit with this optimization problem, we need to make 540 standard bags and we need to make 252 deluxe bags. If we do that with the time that we have, we will exhaust each of the constraint functions and we will maximize our profit contribution.